This week's episode of Low Five Podcast is sponsored by No Wave Academy. At NoWaveAcademy.com, you can view an array of online workshops by some of today's best contemporary artists. Their instructors include Mia Bergeron, Paul Christina, Steve Kim, myself, Aaron Westerberg, and many more. So if you use this code at checkout, LOFI-10, that's all caps, L-O-F-I-10, you can get 10% off all online workshops. This is a great resource. They're very well done videos. They were fun to do. They're amazing to watch. And there's a ton you can learn by so many great artists. So take advantage of that while you can. Hello and welcome to episode 10 of Lo-Fi Podcast. I am John Wentz, recording conversations with artists, musicians, and filmmakers from my studio in Paris, France. Uh, before we get started, just one thing to mention. Um, so far, we've been a bi-weekly podcast, and from here on out, we're going to move to weekly. So every Wednesday, you can find an episode from your favorite streaming platform and on YouTube as well. Um, and if you can, once again, rate and review, follow on Spotify, all these things that I never realized help, do help greatly. Uh, we have plans for the future that all these things would really make it much easier to achieve. So with that, this conversation was recorded on January 16th with my friend Arshan Nair from his website. Arshan Nair is a self-taught visual artist illustrator and digital artist specializing in mixed media illustration and digital art based out of berlin germany archon's visual expressions are part of a journey which is really influenced by the mysteries of our existence and how every action emotion and our interconnectedness in a universal scale sets off a chain of reactions which we experience from the micro to the macro scale i hope you enjoy this conversation without further delay archon nair oh man <laughs> With me, I'm like super chill and open with anything so you can put everything in. I mean, it can be absolutely the way it is. So with me, everything is cool. Okay. Awesome. Good to hear. Yes. To hear. Um, so yeah, let's, I mean, let's just go ahead and jump into it, man. I'm I'm actually really excited uh, to talk to you because I've been following you for a while. And then we, I th- it was a c- couple of months ago, we connected because I started doing digital work and then you started sending me tips and then you were so cool to send that little demo that that you forgot you sent. And I don't know, man, just, you were just super cool about it. Um, Thanks bro. No, thank you. So, um, first, can you uh, just give yourself a brief introduction? Yes. So my name is Arshan Nair, as you might have guessed from the title. And, uh, I'm a digital artist and illustrator based out of Berlin. Uh, I'm originally from India, but I moved here. I moved to Europe about three years ago, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I've been I, I've been creating, I've been painting, creating digital art and illustrations for about fourteen years now. I started doing this in two thousand six, uh, professionally and full time, and yeah, that's that's uh, pretty much it. I've, I just love creating so much. I'm super obsessed about about exploring inner worlds and you know. Uh, do, uh, expressing that through my work and I, I guess that's what that's what reflects my work my my lifestyle my persona my family life everything revolves around that and everything which happens with me physically also kind of like reflects that in my into my work and uh you know my my exploration of like the inner journey or the inner world so yeah, bro. I mean, uh, it's it's pretty amazing. I'm so I feel so blessed and so much gratitude, man, all the time. So uh, I love it. I love creating. I, I, I just feel that it's such a big blessing and a gift. How did you get started in India? Because what were you doing before you started digital art? So my journey has been like pretty strange because uh, you know, like none of my family, like no one, even far remotely far in my family, my relatives. Uh, you know, like my father's uh, f- side of the family or my mother's side of the family are creative at all. Like they're not creative in terms of like no one is into music, art, performance, uh, acting, nothing. Like there's no creative 
uh, connection at all. And you know, when I was growing up, I was it was it was like this middle class uh, upper middle class family lifestyle, which was predominantly influenced by the Western culture. Because India is a very new, fresh, uh, free country, you know, and like a lot of the influence which was happening, especially the pre-internet stage, was uh, a lot of these influences from the Western culture, especially all these movies coming in and you know, with with like uh, industries booming and stuff. So my my family was more you know inclined towards like they were all engineers and doctors and scientists. Everyone from my family is like extremely educated and like uh, super proficient in whatever they're doing. And they were all based out of the US, like uh, all parts of the US are spread all across India. And while I was growing up, I had no exposure towards art or music or, you know, any any kind of like cultural activity. The, the, the most I would see was just movies. You know, I used to watch a lot of movies while growing up and I, I was really into storytelling. I used to love... Uh, good storytelling since I was a kid. Dad was a businessman. He was like, he was a really, he was doing really well in the textile industry. And that is what I saw him do. Like his conversations revolved around that. And my mom was like uh, a a very simple homemaker. So uh, we had a very simple life. And when like I was around 14 or 15, my dad passed away. Like it was a sudden accident he met he was he was actually murdered Ooh, so I'm sorry to hear that no worries bro so yeah I mean I was extremely close to him so uh, you know like my my everything like I was having a ball of a, a ball of a journey like everything in life was amazing and then everything just moved 360 degrees like everything just toppled 360 degrees like I saw everything which I wasn't supposed to experience was experience in terms of financial situation social situation emotionally it was a turmoil for the next 10 years. And that is when I started to recognize a lot of different patterns, you know, like initially I started questioning, why did this happen to me? Why isn't this happening to a lot of people? Why is this strange, uh, you know, experience? Why did this just happen to me? And a lot of the things which followed after my dad passing away was extremely weird. And I was like, I started connecting the dots somehow, like over the years, I was like, why did this particular thing happen? which somehow connects with his passing away and why it's supposed to, it doesn't suppose, it doesn't seem to be random. Nothing seems to be random, you know, and I started connecting the dots backwards over the next few years. And I was like, man, this is crazy. There's something beneath the surface. I definitely feel that what has been like conditioned into us or, you know, what, whatever the society we live in uh, teaches us is really not it. There's something more beyond what reality is. And I started getting really fascinated by that. But it wasn't so serious by the time, like I was around, I think, uh, 19 or 20 or something. Uh, when I started working into my, I mean, I joined my family business because my mom was taking care of that after my dad passed away. And I was supposed to, uh, you know, join her and help her out with the business and stuff. And like, by this time, I had no inclination towards art. I wasn't making art and... You know, I was, I, I just thought that this is my life. Like I have to get into my family business because that's what we grew up looking at. And, you know, this is what I'm supposed to do. And that's like, that's my responsibility. And I, I, I joined in and I started learning stuff over there around textiles, around marketing, around production, designing clothes, stuff like that. And for about like five years, I was completely into it. I was immersed into it. I was doing a lot of uh, production and client projects for brands in Europe, uh, especially in Italy and France. And I used to visit uh, these countries a lot. And while I used to visit during my free time, I used to check out all these local galleries and check out the art scene and go to music festivals and stuff. And my mind was blown. Like my mind started opening up and I was like, holy shit, like what this gives me so much, I don't know, like uh, happiness and I feel like I'm in an alternate dimension when I'm immersed around artists or, or, you know, just their, just their works. And I was really, really inspired. It just used to disconnect me from all the hustle bustle of daily life. And then, uh, you know, like while I was in my family business, I was doing, I was going about my daily stuff. I realized that, you know, I was not a very happy person. I'm usually, I feel that I'm a very positive person since I've been a kid. 
but uh, I started to see that I shifted a lot. Like my mannerisms, my personality wasn't the way I, I, I wanted it to be in the sense that I started becoming a very negative, a very stressed out person, even though I was earning a lot of money, but it wasn't just making me happy, man. And uh, that frustration kind of led me to start creating. And what really happened was uh, about six or seven years down when I was in, when I was doing my family business thing, uh, this was around 2006 beginning. Uh, I, st- I, I accidentally came across this site called DeviantArt. I don't know if you know about this site. Oh, it I used remember to... DeviantArt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it used to be like really famous. It was, this was just before I think Facebook just started or Twitter and all these in social media uh, sites. This site used to be like really big in terms of the artistic community. And I used to watch all these crazy, amazing artists doing such amazing work and posting them. And, you know, like I I started like interacting with a lot of different people, doing a lot of different things. I used to just message them and ask, hey, I love your work. Can we do something together? I I don't know, like some random messages. And one of these guys actually uh, sent me his work. And he said, hey, Archan, if you want, you can just remix one of my works and just put it online. And what happened was that I had Photoshop installed. It, I think it was a very early version of Photoshop. And I just had, I just knew a bit about layers and just some tools because I used to do like uh, web design and stuff during my high school days, uh, you know, just going for competitions and stuff. So I just opened Photoshop. I just did something for five minutes and I uploaded it into DeviantArt. And I got like two comments and people were like, wow, this is so cool. And this is so nice. And I was like, holy shit, like, I just made something and someone just commented on it, which who I don't even know. And this got me really, really, you know, excited. And what I started doing was every day I used to just in my sitting in my office, I used to just make something random uh, uh, in my uh, computer and just upload it into DeviantArt. And I used to get like one, two, three, four comments every day on each work. And, uh, For me, that was super exciting. I was like, man, this is so crazy. Someone is actually taking out time to see my work and they're appreciating it. And I'm creating something out of nothing. And it just comes into life. And someone who's sitting somewhere around the globe out of all these six, seven billion people is actually taking the time to see that. This is the, how cool is the, how cool is technology? How amazing is the internet that it's empowering someone like me to do this? And for me, like this was the kickoff point and I started doing this every day and every day I start, as I started doing this, I started becoming more obsessed with, with creating, you know, and by this time I had no clue. I wanted to take the, take this fully as my career because uh, like the, the culture I grew up in and the, the people I grew up around and even like the, the culture in India at that time was not so much uh, around creativity and, you know, doing a lot of artistic stuff. Like art was never a career option. No one ever told you, no one ever, you know, uh, said that, oh, you can be an artist and earn a livelihood out of it. And for me, that was, that was never an option. So I thought I'll just do this as a hobby. And I kept doing this because it was giving me so much joy. And as I was doing this so much more, I just fell so much in love. I just became so obsessed so much so that I was sitting in an office during my meetings. I was painting in front of people. I used to come back home, not sleep. You know, my uh, my wife and my son, uh, my son was newly born at that time. And I never used to sleep. I used to sleep at like three or four in the morning, just creating art and learning things and learning new things and seeing more artists, what everyone is doing and just trying to understand from what everyone's doing. There were not many podcasts or YouTube channels and stuff. So I could just see visually what people were doing and try to replicate or get inspired from, from say, a stroke or a technique, you know, just... Just trying to understand it. It was like solving a mathematical equation for me. And for me, that was exciting because I was completely zoned out. I was not in that physical realm of doing this and solving day-to-day boring problems of my business and stuff. So I, 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 I was not sleeping and I was just so obsessed. And about six, seven months later, bro, uh, I was sitting one day alone in my office and I so I had I always had these moments of realization you know like I used to always talk to myself and just ask deeper questions about reality and life and so I was in a juncture where I was obviously contemplating my dad's death and the journey after that and all the struggles I had and everything and how they all beautifully uh, synchronized with each other they were all 
it seemed that they were all meant to be but at the same time uh, i also asked myself that by the time i turn 40 or 50 and i look back into life and i asked myself at that point that hey achan what is it that you've earned your entire life what would your answer be and looking at the cir- current circumstances my only answer was luxury money and material wealth and that freaked me out bro like as if like it was as if someone just punched me so hard on my face like it, it was like the most shocking moment of my life it was like what am i doing i never even asked myself what the hell am i doing like am i even doing something which has a purpose which has a deeper meaning i've just been doing stuff which uh people just uh, or you know the circumstances just made me do like i was just pushed into the situation and i never questioned this i never I, 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 it, it it's like i was in a rat race you know like i was just running blindly and i was like man it can't be like we are such incredible saint, sentient beings we are so powerful and 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 wise and, and intelligent and it can't be that we are all here just to be in this kind of rat race i i, I just clearly felt that our purpose here or uh, our mission here as human beings is to help each other to serve to inspire to learn from each other and to be to contribute to the society in some way and i felt i need to do that no matter what it takes i mean that was like the the shake up moment and i was like how can i do that like what is the best way i can contribute to the society because i don't want that answer when i grow 50 60 years i don't want luxury money to be my answer i mean that can follow i mean i'd be i'd be blessed and i have gratitude if i have that but i want to have a deeper impact in in the society and i was like how can i do that and i can do that through what i love and what do i love i love creating and so i want to create so you know like it just that spark just happened like boom like some it it was clear bro like i felt that there was some higher power which channeled through me at that time you know like i was definitely it was not something just like a mind thing i could clearly see that there is some higher energy which is inspiring me to do this and i called up my wife and i was like man you know like i just thought about this and i want to do this i want to quit my family business and i want to just paint all the time this is what i want to do this is what what i've meant to do and she was like yeah yeah come home and we'll talk about it and she thought that you know it's one of those moments where i get extremely hyper and excited about something and i'll it'll die off in a few moments <laughs> so so i i went back home and i started having conversations with her and you know like i was talk i started talking to her and she was extremely supportive she was like yeah man like if you if you feel like doing it just do it but be sensible and you know just don't make uh, just don't make any stupid mistakes uh, take it just calculate it a bit and uh, do do your stuff accordingly and i started bouncing off this idea with my friends i started discussing this with my family my friends and most of the people were extremely discouraging man not like in the way that they were they didn't they wanted to discourage me but they had no other opinions or maybe exposure towards life because i mean that's i think everyone is shaped up from their own journey so i everyone started saying that hey uh, you know do this as a hobby how will you earn you're doing so well for yourself uh you know like um, d- just do this side by side and man like i was so i was so like i was not in a very good state of mind getting all these opinions for about a month from people saying that you know do this do that and i was like no i just i just feel like i need to do this you know because this is a calling from within and of course it's it's not easy it's it's very i have to start everything from scratch but it sounds so exciting i want to do this so i ultimately after a month uh, i did not listen to anyone basically and i just came to down to two points okay so if i don't take a switch right now what is the worst which will happen i'll fail i might not earn i might not be able to feed my family i'll try again i'll try again i'll try again something will work out you know i i'm sure something will work out if and if it doesn't work out say after a few years if i keep failing i'll i can go back to my family business i have that you know i can i can start that from scratch again as well and you know something will work out but what if i don't do this what is what happens if i don't do this if i if i give in to my fears and you know my anxiety and i just go for if i don't listen to my heart and if i just keep continuing with my business what happens then i'll i'll have regrets so 20 years or 30 years down the line i'll have such strong regrets that man you had the chance you didn't do it at least you could have failed but you would have tried you know like you could have you would have experienced the journey a little bit so for me it was like two things either failing or regrets and i was not really afraid of failing because i failed in so many things already so i was like what the hell you can try again 
but i didn't want to have regrets man like that was something which i was like whatever happens whatever the outcome is no regrets in life you know no no regrets in this journey so i'm going to go for it let's let's see what happens and so of course like i i just did not it's it's not so rosy as well because of course i had some kind of backing for about so i i had made my calculations i was like okay i have some amount of money which have savings and if i don't even earn anything for a year i can still make my family happy i can pay my bills everything for a year and i have a year to like set up some kind of base to at least jump from there you know and see what happens uh, so i i had some reserve in terms of money so i could take that as a back backup and start off from there so i i did my calculations i made everything set up in a nice way and i just jumped into it man and 2007 january i remember very clearly i got a new imac uh and on the first floor of my house i had two floors so i had this room which was empty which was basically a room where i grew up and i converted that i took down everything in all the furniture everything made it completely empty and set up this beautiful desk and set up my computer there and i started working had no clue about what's going to happen uh <laughs> how is the journey going to be i had no clue about the art industry how am i going to sell my work or what am i going to do how am i going to get clients uh but i was just so excited about the pure love and drive drive to create that i could not see anything man and bro that was the best decision of my life like i still say the the decision to create the decision to follow my heart and just to create was so so i'm so grateful man i'm so extremely grateful i'm so blessed that i had this opportunity and i had the strength to jump to it and make this happen and it's been a beautiful beautiful journey i just have no regrets at all man touch wood that is amazing Thanks. <laughs> yeah, wow. it's, it's been it's been amazing. Yes. Yeah. So I wonder. I mean, there's so much that comes up with that. But I, one of the first things I wonder is, since then, since that point, were there any situations or roadblocks that came up that made you question the decision? Oh yes, yes. What, really. Absolutely. How how do you deal with those? Absolutely, bro. I think I think I remember so clearly initially. Uh, like i used to see all these other creative people especially people artists who were established in say the west coast of the us or in europe and i used to see how they used to work and i used to see like a lot of artists either used to work through galleries or they had representatives or some of them used to work through agencies and uh i i i and you know like they they were working with some amazing clients so for me it was very important that you know like i sustain my family like that was the main thing like i didn't want to let them down but at the same time i really wanted to stay true to my core which is to create and to learn and i remember the first year was really, really difficult especially because i had no clue and what really happened was that i was doing a lot of my personal art which i mean i would never show to my my earlier work is so bad bro like it's so bad like when <laughs> i when i look at it right now i'm like how the hell was i doing it and i used to love it i used to love it so much at that time I was like wow how did i make this you know this is next level and this is amazing and of course i used to see other artists and be like holy shit like i have to reach i have to like push myself i have to like get better i have to practice more etc et i remember all those thoughts like very immature kidish like thoughts used to run at that time but i remember that you know like i was trying to figure out how everything works not just in terms of the industry but also how i would like to design my life so I remember I used to like contact all these uh brands so I used to get all these magazines like Vogue and GQ and all that and I used to see uh all these brands who used to advertise in the magazines I used to call them up and be like hey you know like I'm a designer blah 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 I'm an artist and uh, I'm going to send you my portfolio would love to work and most of them never used to respond or you know get back of but course. some of so, so I I think I used to like do this every day like I used to fix like 3 hours every day and just do this this marketing uh, trying to meet people and show show them my work and i realized that like a lot of people who uh, i i was contacting was not interesting number one because uh, they would only get in touch with you because they're interested so i was like man this is not how my industry used to work before you know just getting in touch with clients was much more simpler than how when you are a creative person and secondly what started happening was that i i was putting up a lot of work online So I was getting a lot of inquiries like every day I was getting like 10 or 15 emails asking me to produce uh any kind of work man like graphic design illustrations everything you know like 
and I used to say yes, yes, yes to everything because <laughs> I just wanted to figure out, and I was like, I don't want the money which I've saved to go down. Like there has to be some kind of surplus. So I was saying saying yes to everything, and I started noticing that I became a a, a factory, a, a creative factory, rather than doing what I really set out to do. So after a year. I started noticing that I was doing the exact same thing I was doing before in my family business, which was basically producing work uh, at a large amount in a large amount of quantity, rather than focusing on like quality work. Rather than I mean, it was just that the product had changed, and I was like, man, this is not what I want to do. You know, like I just want to I just want to do the kind of work I want to do, and I want that the clients I collaborate with. also hire hire me for the work uh, they see in my portfolio not just anything else because most of the work which i was doing for them was being dictated by them and there was no uh, input from my side or hardly any input from my side it was mostly like they used to show me some kind of visual or had a particular brief and there was no there was no like particular co creation ha- happening and for me that was like i mean i was of course taking a lot of work and the the pay was very less but at the same time there was no satisfaction in terms of the creative satisfaction so after a year i i reevaluated how i want to go ahead in my journey i i realized that okay the one year i've tested out a little bit things how they happen now i want to do things in my own way and of course it doesn't it's not going to happen overnight but at least i need to set the intention there so what i started doing was i started saying no to people so inquiries used to come i used to see which ones like i used to receive briefs and i used to see okay this one looks exciting this some this one seems interesting so i started using i started uh saying no to the ones which i've completely felt as off the track and yes to projects which i felt would be in line with what i want to do and that is how like i kind of uh, you know carved my own way the next few years in doing projects which were in alignment with the kind of work i really wanted to do which made me learn more which made me challenge more and you know which were uh, creatively extremely satisfying and it took me a few years i would say 3 to 4 years to to really get there but it was like a very slow but very conscious effort in in ha- in doing that and i think it went very parallel to building my work like improving my work and you know like focusing on the quality of my work and learning more going deeper into my my craft and i think that was simultaneously helping building my work and you know uh, when people were looking at my work they were like okay so he's doing this this kind of style so we would probably want to hire him for this so i think it slowly started uh, becoming my own space and people started contacting me for that that was one of the initial challenges i feel was pretty pretty uh, pretty interesting to deal with then the second challenge was where uh, extremely connected to this one was uh, which somehow still happens sometimes now as well i'm sure i don't know how it happens for you and i'm sure it happens to a lot of creative people as well but uh, initially i used to like when i started being very selective about the projects uh, there were moments when i had a lot of work say i was occupied for two or three months and then i had no work for two or three months because oh, yes. i was saying because i was saying no to projects and i was like so the the amount of money i used to earn earn in those 2 3 months was enough for me to survive the next 2 3 months but then sometimes i used to be like okay so where is the next project coming i'm not sure if i'm going to get new projects you know shall i just say yes to this one because i need money and sometimes i have of course i mean but you know those challenges were were there as well where you completely surrender to the unknown and you just you I I I feel it was like more of a mind training for me where I was trying to surrender more to the fact that the universe helped me get here it's going to take care of me you know it's going to definitely create a path for me to you know to to be able to learn to grow uh, to understand myself and the world around me a bit more better so I'm sure it's going to work out it's not going to be difficult so I had this bouts of anxiety and and security and you know stress around uh with the next project coming going to come but i think that that's what also fuels a creative person you know that's what drives you to create more as well that what pushes you as well because if it was all comfortable and nice and rosy man it would be so boring so i i feel that all these things are they come in a package the fact that you are able to live an amazing life by doing what you love at the same time having these different uh you know like uh, what do you say uh, hiccups 
along the way, which which is so interesting and makes the journey much more fruitful. I I would say. So yeah, bro, it just keeps going this way, and I think one of the main focuses right now, like currently, is that uh, how do how do I get better with my work? How do I keep? I mean, there's no problem with like creativity. Like I'm I'm always creating all the time. So I I never face those kinds of issues. I used to, but now the thing is, how do I improve myself? How do I go deeper? How do I uh, contribute more to the society? How do I help inspire others? You know, how can I how can I share my knowledge? So these are the things which I'm I'm really focusing on now, and I'm trying to solve these things. So at this time. I mean that's so much to juggle when you're getting started. So you're immediately looking for work. You're also building your style. You're also learning techniques. And you you started digital and you've stayed digital the whole time, correct? Yeah. So I started completely digital. Like I was using what Photoshop. What were you using in the beginning? I was only using Photoshop because I think that was oh. the only only tool at that time. <laughs> There was one other one uh, which I never used though for my professional work, which was uh, called Paint Paint Shop Pro. I don't know if it still exists, but uh, I used to use this um, before in my high school. So whatever I learned in Photoshop was because of Pinchup Pro. I learned stuff there, and then I moved into Photoshop. And then initially, the first year was just Photoshop and learning the tool uh, inside out. And then what I started doing was that uh, I got really fascinated with digital uh, art because what I felt with digital art was that a lot of the things which you cannot produce. uh in the traditional medium you can capture or recreate them digitally because of the kind of uh uh things because it it basically does not it defies the laws of physics so uh you know when when you're basically creating in a virtual environment in a virtual setup which which is digital it's another dimension so you can do so much more than what you can do tr- traditionally but what what really happened was that i started getting bored after a year just using photoshop and i was like how do i explore other things like i want to really experiment and try out new things and what i started doing was i started i started playing around with pens and markers and watercolors and i started uh, just abstract painting you know on canvases on paper and i used to scan them and take it on the computer into photoshop and then i used to paint over them or i used to start painting on photoshop and then i started printing them out doing watercolors over are uh, doing a lot of traditional stuff then taking it back into the computer and so i started experimenting a lot around with photoshop and like digital tools and traditional tools and then over the f- last 5 years it's been more of a mix of photoshop zbrush uh, cinema 4d um and i use of course uh, pens and markers and watercolors as well and uh, yeah it's so it's been a mix of 2d 3d and traditional medium so I love I love playing around with different mediums and seeing what comes out of it. Right. So actually a lot of the work that you you have like on your website or on social media is more you could say mixed media than it is dig- even though it's primarily digital. It's actually mixed media. Yes, but so like the the this the uh, this the core of the work is has always been digital. But because that's what's been the most fascinating for me because I I love I love using technology into my work. and i love that it opens up so many possibilities but so i keep it like i keep it revolved around digital but then i keep playing around with different things <laughs> and i i find it super fascinating man it's just it's just amazing that you know like it just because i i, I don't know I, i'm not like a hardcore traditional painter like if i have to paint traditionally i would if someone would look at my work traditionally like if a uh, 100% uh, traditional painting it would be like holy shit this is crap like you know because of course my my practice hasn't been that but uh, uh and even like my my sensibilities in terms of uh having like a classical way of painting or stuff is it's not there because i've been self taught it's been a very alternative awkward kind of way of i've learned myself because my brain doesn't work like that i think my brain works in a more flowy organic way so <laughs> so what so you know like i i feel that just just mixing different mediums kind of somehow opens up its own way and i love the spontaneity of it in the sense that uh, it becomes very mysterious the entire process like i just don't know what's going to come out the next moment you know i'm not sure how it is when you paint do you actually know how it is when like do you clearly know what the 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 
how the painting is going to be like do you have the image in your head completely um, or it's is it very organic now it's organic i think in in the beginning i definitely did and mostly because uh, i went to school for art um but and this is something that's kind of got me in trouble like in terms of working with galleries and stuff like that is i i get really coming out of school i went through kind of an existential crisis i became very very depressed for a couple of years wow why is that um, because i think the the rigor of going through school and what i'd learned it was a very traditional school I, it took me a while to realize that's not what I was into. And I completely lost, not just in terms of working, but my senses, like what art that I liked. And I, like I left school, like when I entered school, I was very much into like um, juxtapose art, skateboard art, graphic stuff, skulls, oh. you know, all this crazy stuff. And then I go into school and then by the time I graduated, I thought art was, you know, naked females and still lifes. So completely twisted my head. And it took me a long time to get rid of that. Um, and also what I didn't realize, and it's only something in the last couple of years, is I think something where I kind of feel like I connect with you is that discovery is my yes. motivation. Yes. So if I feel, even when I feel like I'm starting to get like um, more of a factory producing the same thing, um, I just want to break away from it and just play. And that's why I think digital for me, since I'm so new to it, has become so exciting. But the problem is when you work with galleries, that doesn't work. They don't want you playing around too much. Yes, exactly. I mean, that's that's something which... But but I think it's changing as well. Of course, the value of uh, digital art is of obviously not as close to what traditional paintings are. But I've, I've, I'm, I'm noticing so many galleries especially the new ones newer ones or uh, uh, you know young younger people who are handling those galleries are basically so much more open minded but bro like coming to like your work i feel like when you just said this about you going through like a classical training and that you felt that it's not working for you and you know you took so much time to break out i feel that uh, that kind of reflects in like the style of your work as well because because that uh, that space of that contrast which you had to go through uh, to realize that this is not for you, basically molded your art into a into a place where you eventually wanted to break out. Because if you didn't go through, like, say, a traditional schooling system of 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 the arts, you wouldn't probably be doing such experimental works yourself as well. You know. Uh, oh, absolutely, yeah. So I th I think it's fascinating that you know, like, I don't know if you really believe in like the traditional school system. Like, I don't know if you are up for it. Like, if someone if a, if a young budding artist or someone who's starting to start out, if they come and ask you, hey, which school would you recommend me? Do you recommend me to go into school? What would you say? Like, uh, like what, what, what would your advice be to them? Um, I think at this stage, it's, it's changed throughout the years. I've been asked that quite a bit. And I actually taught for a long time, too. So I got that question. I think I would ask them, what what is it you're interested in and what do you see the artwork you're creating down the line, what would it look like? For me, I don't. You know, the thing that I think is interesting is in the short time I'm doing the podcast, the majority, if not all, of the people I've interviewed are self-taught. To me, that's fascinating because I've always been surround, surrounded by schooled artists. And I found the common thread is they all have a very distinct style way early on. And that's something you want to develop. And I mean, not, I don't like to use the word style. I'd say voice. You know, it's something connecting your inner to your, to your mind, to your hand, to your canvas or whatever it is that you're using to create. And so I would caution somebody first and be like, I would do it on your own for a bit, for a few years at least, and see what happens. Yes. And I think that like, I think maybe like the people you interviewed, uh, I mean, of course you see their work and you get fascinated by them and you know, by the works. And of course, like uh, the artist's expression, you know, has a reflection, like the works are basically a reflection of the artist as well. And I, I think that because you see that the style is so strange or maybe different, it's not what's usually there. So you clearly can see from the work they produce that they're probably not like traditionally trained or something, you know, like it doesn't have that kind of like rhythm in, in that. Like, because I think people who are self-taught, would not basically like for me i mean i can say it for myself i don't follow rules so like for me rules i mean i just don't understand the concept of rules or doing things a certain way uh so i mean 
and i think that is what like comes out of my work as well like because yeah. i'm not following any rules and i just go strange and weird and like i use such weird ways of of creating i feel that uh, that's what you probably seen the artists you have interviewed with the work as well and that clearly stands out uh, yeah. in terms I, of the style Definitely that, but I also think for me what I see, because when I was starting to try and break out of what I was doing, um, I ran across, um, an, I think he, he's some kind of neuroscientist. I can't remember exactly what is, he does, but he's an Indian doctor named uh, V.S. Ramachandran. And he's an art lover, but he works, his main work is with, um, he works with amputees. Like he studies like phantom limb syndrome and things like that. So he, at one point, he gave these really interesting lectures where he talked about wanting to see how art affects the brain. Oh, yes, bro. I, I know about this scientist. I've, I've definitely seen a few of his videos. Oh, have you? Okay. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And yes. it was interesting because he first starts with um, where he grew up in India. So he starts with Indian art, looking at the religious statues. And he, he starts talking about how nothing is perfect. They're exaggerated. These aren't realistic. So he builds his whole hypothesis on actually we don't want to see things too realistic. <laughs> yes, exactly. And that really rang with, because I started looking at the things I liked. I'm like, oh, even if it... You know, if I really look at it, like there's elongated limbs, like, and you can look that through, through a lot of art, like really things like my, even artists like Michelangelo or Ong or things like that. It was stylized. Michelangelo is not realism. He was making up muscles. Yes. And so all the way down, I started realizing, oh, okay, I like things that seem quirky. I like things that don't look perfect. And I think that's the other thing, right? And, and I think that is what happens with like the reason I think art is so not just visual art but any form of art is so captivating is that it basically uh i mean it it f for for maybe the mind it's like you're opening up another realm it's like you basically created a hole in this in the realm in in space and you uh -huh. ripped it apart and you know there's another realm over there and over there all the creatures or the worlds are so different and so unique and because your your brain processes forms and structures in a certain way when you see it slightly distorted or slightly different or extremely different you're like oh man this is so amazing you know you you get right sucked into it and i think it's so attractive and it's so it's it's almost like being on psychedelics or drugs i guess for people when they yes. come across amazing art uh especially like all like twisted art and i feel like when you just said this bro like when you're talking about michelangelo and how like it's so exaggerated and everything I, it's like something which came across me was if you see like all these crazy amazing painters who do realism who do like extreme realistic art like that you just cannot distinguish whether it's a real photo i don't know if you've seen any of them but oh yeah yeah i mean i mean of course when you see their skills it's like extremely mind-blowing i would not even be able to do one percent of what they did I wouldn't have the patience or the stamina to be able to create that. But if you actually see, like, personally speaking, I mean, it looks visually stunning, but I don't remember a single piece, which, piece or artist or art which I remember because it never jolted me from inside, you know? It never, like, pulled my heart out, like, you know? Because it's, it's exactly the same as a photo. Technically outstanding, but, I mean, emotionally, I don't know, man, like they don't it doesn't feel it just doesn't feel you it doesn't touch you uh so, and and if you see all these amazing art which comes from within uh it's, it's it immediately connects and it goes beyond your senses it you react to it without logic like it's something you see it touches you it's an instant reaction and for me that is magical and i feel that it's so mystical and magical that it defies everything with science or modern or the modern world teaches us you know uh -huh. that that uh life is full of atoms and how things are interacting with each other blah, blah 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 and that everything is material and physical nothing is material and physical man if a piece of work can touch you in such a deep way i mean for me that is magic and that defies everything like no one can explain how that reaction happens uh not even the brilliant scientists or any anyone you know even through any kind of equation and I feel that is the power of creativity and, and the creator who has created us, man. And that's, it's, it's just mind juggling for me to see that, you know, we are a part of a, a system or a, or a creation, which is, which enables us to do this and which has an effect 
on each other in in a certain way like if i see your work or if i see some other artist work which moves me i'm like how is that movement happening like how does it move me so much that i want to keep looking at it for hours and hours and it just makes me numb completely um yeah i totally agree 100% and something you said uh that i have to ask because you have a body of work entitled psychedelia Yes. Have you ever experimented with psychedelics? No, bro, never. That's the weird <laughs> thing because the psychedelia is uh, so. So the thing is that like a lot of my friends uh, in my circle are into psychedelics. Like they're really they're either into like I think the the most. I mean, if even if they've not taken psychedelics or mushrooms or or ayahuasca or anyone, the one of them would have definitely been on weed all the time. So so all all of my friends have been. uh using natural substances and they've always encouraged me to use because they think they feel that you know uh, i mean i'm meant to consume it but for me i feel that psychedelia or psychedelics is already within us and it is already around us we don't have to consume something for for it to penetrate into our neural system to to change its effect so that we have an alternative uh you know we have an alternative experience of reality i feel we can already achieve it in this state in this waking state it it is already achievable the only thing is you have to work towards it it doesn't happen in a shortcut but if you actually work towards it it can live a longer uh, it can last forever like it can be like you can be in that permanent state forever and so for me what i've done is that through my work and through my own experience of of meditating and just being or, or just living life the way i do have have only worked towards being in this state forever where all these dimensions cross cross and i have no, and it doesn't really matter because you ultimately realize that all is one you know like everything is this this one pure organism working and playing with each other and so for for me i f- i see that life like everything which happens around us is a psychedelic experience already like everything around us is psychedelia like if you just don't give any words to anything like if you just observe things the way they are and just observe them and just look at them closely like for example i see birds flying right now out of my window and if you just look at them and not give any label and uh, you know not give any kind of description to oh the birds are flying just look at that the way it is just how it is man bro this is the biggest trip ever how is a creature <laughs> designed in such perfection so it flies in a group in such coordination in space time with blue colors and like right li- right light reflecting on it the way it is and golden and this and that and holy shit bro like it's crazy i mean <laughs> is that a, um is cuz i like what you said uh, when you're talking about when you take away the name like the label of something um and you mentioned meditating is that something you got from meditation okay cuz i meditate uh, daily as well and that was part of the practice was taking away labels like when you hear sounds it's just a sound it's not a uh, metal falling yes exactly so you Because, apply that to your everyday life yes and what i so for me meditation is when i take attention to the source of my mind so basically so i mean the first part is where i realize that uh I mean the first question which came a lot of a long time back when I was going through this journey of transitioning into an artist and things happening around me was the first question was who am I and who are we and when you ask that question in the language form the the first question which comes is oh you are this body and you are this mind but if you actually start looking closely you are not the body and the mind because the body and the mind keep changing they keep changing all the time and they're basically nothing but structures of of information which has been collected in term in form in the form of food in the form of the environment you live in in the form of all the knowledge and information uh in terms of data which is thrown at you and which we absorb so i felt that oh these things are just aspects of us but they're not us so then what are we so when you start looking deeper and deeper you start to realize that everything is made up up of concepts and structures and concepts and you know formations of words and language and we are trying to interpret everything through that but what if we take out everything what if we go back to the baby state like when you were born we had no idea of what knowledge is who we are we were just looking at life purely through the eyes of life itself we did not know this is my mom like in the sense that i was not 
labeling this is my mother and this is my father and they're going to take care of me i had no clue right like when we were babies we just we ha- everything is blank we just experiencing life the way it is and that is how we are supposed to be then we start then everything st- then the society and then inf- the 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 environment around you starts feeding us with information we start collecting all the information on top of each other and then we start interpreting life through that lens of information which we have gathered and all our opinions our judgments our actions are based around all those things but if we if we remove all those all those layers if we just remove all those layers of the onion which we have gathered all around us and we go back to the baby state we realize that if you just look at life the way it is you just realize that you are life itself and you that you are not even a human you are no gender you are you know species nothing you see around you is a species itself you are just life experiencing life you that life is experiencing itself through you like in this particular blob you call human or man or whatever but again that's a structure and of course we need words to communicate with each other but if you just if we just start looking at the minutest of the most simplest things around us we start to realize bro that man meditation is actually decluttering removing all these structures we have created and taking the mind back to where it starts where it comes from so of course the mind has a source as well because otherwise it wouldn't operate there is some electricity which is powering it and to me taking the attention back again and again to its source is meditation and what i have tried to do through my work like when i'm painting or when i'm just sitting and watching a movie i try and practice meditation all the time so meditation shouldn't be for me i, I mean in my experience over the years i've realized that meditation is not where i have to deliberately sit and do meditation it's a form of being when you are being when you are just letting things as it is you're meditating because you have you are going back to your source like your attention is completely back diverted into the source of who you are which is you so i i just feel that you know all these clusters of information we have gathered doesn't we don't need to give it any attention it just when we just look back at things in the most simplest way where everything is as is man everything is it's just one organism playing with itself mm absolutely yeah and yeah it's funny something you mentioned about meditation about not not just the thing you do when you sit down and concentrate on it <clears throat> i remember and this is only like within the last year or so that i've reached this point where i realized that like i use the analogy of like when i used to i used to play sports like basketball and you have you have practice and then you have the game and in practice you concentrate and you concentrate and you do 100 free throws so that when you're in the game it becomes automatic exactly it, there's no separation and that's it hit me that meditation's like that like that exactly, 20 bro. minutes i'm sitting down to meditate is what it is practice yes, yes. and then exactly. i take that out into life and yes it, bro wow what an analogy man like that just basically bangs on what i want, what i was trying to say in those 5 minutes yeah it should you be just, all the time even yes. when you're watching a movie or that's like the natural state for example if we were if you were still a baby like for example imagine we were still a baby we were just born into this world and we live in that state forever we live like a baby forever there's no idea of language information nothing inside us the, there is no say i mean just imagine like it's a weird idea but how would you be when you live life like a baby what's happening when you feel hungry you respond automatically at that moment where you don't think that oh i'm going to eat this and this it's just spontaneous reaction to whatever is arising you know when you see beauty you're like whoa when you uh, i don't know when you pee you cry <laughs> or, or the pee or the pee just comes out on its own i don't know whatever yeah. like i mean it's just so spontaneously reactive and what you just said is so beautiful that you know you practice to to live like that so you basically kind of like unlearning i feel the meditation like you kind of learn the first 15 years to to uh, get, like your mind is directed outside all all the time because that's how it's designed right and then the meditation is like the practice of taking the mind back in like internally like you take the mind and you're like okay go back in go back in go back in so it's like mm. the 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 basketball practice like you're practicing the the throws you do you like it's you're throwing the mind back in back in back in so whenever you're in a situation in life like when you go out and say you you someone says something bad to you on your face and you're like 
ah, it doesn't even affect me because he's the same like me, you know. So you because you're practicing that you've trained your mind not to react, ah, uh, right. or some or whatever it can be. So I I feel that it's such a beautiful analogy that you know it's it's this way. Yeah, absolutely. And what so because I want to get to where you're at now which i found fascinating is i because i had no idea you were in berlin when we first started talking yes how did you go from india to berlin and why no bro first i want to ask you because i i okay. when, when i saw that you were in paris i yeah. used to and when i of course i've heard you speaking in your previous podcast i was like you don't have a french accent so how come <laughs> so i was baffled i was uh, like but your name could be french vents i don't know it's german it It's oh, German, yeah. So, it could be. You, so you're originally from Germany? No, so I'm originally from San Francisco. Oh, okay. Yeah, so my my great grandfather or great great grandfather was from Germany. Oh. Um, and so I've been in San Francisco my entire life, and it was two almost two and a half years ago now that I moved to to France to Paris because my girlfriend is Parisian. Oh, wow! So yeah. like, so that was the reason for you to move to Paris, or yeah, mm -hmm. wow. Amazing. Yeah, so I uprooted everything and tried to reestablish out here. And it, funny enough, that's what kind of uh, started the podcast because I have a couple of friends who do podcasts out in the San Francisco, and I kind of guest hosted for them. And for a while, they were very encouraging, and I don't understand why, but they were like, "Man, you should start your own podcast." I'd listen to you, and it was very nice. But I was like, "I don't have nothing to say." But when I got here. It was interesting to me because I felt um, a pretty big difference between European-based artists and American artists. So I thought it would be I wanted to. So it's kind of my excuse to to talk to more people. I so like talking to artists. What was the difference you basically saw between both of them, like the American artists and the? I felt that American artists have become. Uh, in my opinion, far too business oriented. Of course, I understand the the benefit it we have to be if we're going to do this as, as our living there's nothing wrong with it but i just found when i first moved here that when i started talking to artists it was about your art and and it would be a long long time before we started talking about um instagram and and follower accounts and things like that it was refreshing to me it was it took me back to I think how I felt um, in school again to the idea of like discovery. Like I, I don't want to sit here and talk about algorithms. I'd rather talk about, you know, your take on art or something like that. I mean, but like, how do you find Paris? Like, how you like, how you enjoying the city? The last time I was there was about fifteen years ago or something. So yeah, it's it's been long since I've been to Paris, but I absolutely loved the city, man. It was amazing. Yeah, I love it. I I still constantly have these moments that are probably a very American thing. But even like yesterday, so like right now, I have I'm actually have a really bad cold, so I've been staying in the house. But yesterday, I was like, you know, I got to go out and get some food. I'm gonna go to Fromagerie. I'm gonna get some really good cheese. And so I'm just walking down a Paris street, you know, with my headphones on, and it's like, man, I'm so I feel I'm so lucky. I'm going to get amazing food right now. Come back to my flat. I'm going to edit my podcast. That I'm going to do some work and procreate. I mean, it, the city is just so inspiring. Man. Yes. So it's you know it's what I I don't like the term living your best life or living the dream, but it's kind of what hit me. I'm like, man, I'm in a really good spot in my life right now. And then just you know, I, I always think all the little things too, and I'm like, oh man. And then tomorrow I'm, I'm talking to Archon, and then you know I just talked to Craw. Like I've It's just things are really good, and it's good to be. I think to take notice of those things. So crazy, bro! That's that's amazing. Yes, I think Europe. I mean, uh, I feel the same about Europe as well, and that was one of the reasons which uh, inspired me to move here was just the sheer creative energy, man. Which you just feel. Yeah. I call it the spirit, the spirit yes. of yes. the the city or Europe, whatever you want to say. But I mean, you just feel it instantly when you arrive. And I came here in 2016. I think of fifteen. I remember it well. So I basically had a show. I had a project here, uh, and I came to Berlin for three or four days to uh, to be a part of the project. And I mean, me, so me and my family, we travel a lot. Like we used to travel three every two or three months. We were out, uh, whether it was in India or out of India. And whenever we used to travel, we never had a feeling that you know we wanted to move anywhere. And so what happened was when I came here for a project, it was a solo trip. I I just when I came here, I was like, man, this city is amazing. What an what an incredible vibe! 
it's so weird and so strange it's not like any other european city it's not beautiful and at the same time it's 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 amazing like i feel the the people here are so beautiful and like i i love the energy and i, I just absolutely fell in love with the city and then i i went back and i was doing this project called uh, 365 days of art where bro like for a year i created the project was to create one artwork every day for an entire year so for one year 365 days i created an artwork every day and what happened was when i completed 290 days of the project uh, my back got injured badly like it was so bad that the doctors started advising that i have to go in for a surgery oh, and wow. i actually didn't want to i didn't want to go in for a surgery i didn't want to get my back touched and i started showing to like a lot of different doctors and they they just recommended that i have to be on bed rest because i could not sit i could not stand like it was so painful and it was so bad like my body just got stuck and like it was it was really bad bro and so i was i was asked to be, rest in bed and just keep lying down for 2 months and go through physiotherapy non stop every day and so i of course i thought that's the best way but for me what was more dist- uh, like uh like uh, horrific was that i had completed 290 days of the project and i did not want to uh, stop it right there i wanted to complete it and so and i did not want to tell share this with people who are following my work you know the audience which follows my work online etc etc because then it would be you know being be sympathetic to me and stuff like that so i did not share this story with anyone and i was on bed rest and what i did was i created my setup around my bed so i started painting while i was lying down and what really happened was that i went back to square one of like day one of starting my work because when you're lying down and painting your body is not used to it you know you're not used to i mean how can you possibly lie down and paint but i started doing that and it was so strange and my muscles and my bones everything was like all crampled and and cranked up and whatever it was so strange man like i couldn't wow. create like the first few days properly and the kind of work i was creating was really bad but was since was it uh, digital were you working digital or traditional mediums i was doing both but mostly digital like it was okay. mostly uh because i started learning 3d and i thought that uh, you know it would be a really good way for me to learn new tools but at the same time i really wanted to see what would happen if i if i like start doing this every day and there were a lot of revelations which happened during the entire process which i'll get back to you soon but i mean the move so basically i i went out uh, it took me about 2 weeks i got back to a nice groove i got used to like lying down and painting and i completed the project uh, the project was over i did not skip a single day but what really happened was at the end of the project even like when i completed about 70% I realized that it was so transformative not just in terms of the quality of work I was doing but my internal journey like I felt that there was a major shift which happened internally just doing that project you know like I set that up I did it but there was a major transformation which happened uh internally and I realized that it only happened because I created a, a space which was uncomfortable for me and i felt that you know like i set up the challenge i create i went into a zone where i was uncomfortable which was not not really a zone where i would really like to be and that changed a lot for me in, internally what i want to keep doing this and i started bouncing this idea with my wife like i started talking to her about this and she was like let's move out let's move out of the city and i was like yeah let's move to like south of india it's a so beautiful there like my parents come from kerala so i really wanted to move there it's a beautiful place man one of the most stunning places i've ever been like i would hands down say one of the most incredible places on earth and i was like yeah let's move there it's so amazing blah blah, blah. and she's like no 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 let's move out of the country it's easy to move here i mean it almost be staying in the same city <laughs> just move out of the country she and upped was, the game yeah yeah exactly bro <laughs> i was like out of the country where should we move like there's no place or then i remember like the first thing which hit me was berlin because i absolutely fell in love with the city when i came here for those few days and so i was like yeah let's move to berlin and she was like but you have just been there for four days how can you just say you were there like a tourist you know like you were just staying in some hotel and you just don't know how it is 
Why don't you go there, stay for some time and see how it is. So in 2017, I actually came here January uh, and I stayed here for a month. Uh, I stayed at a friend's house. I was doing my laundry, uh, my cooking, not cooking, doing my dishes, going grocery shopping. I was working from home, meeting people. And bro, I absolutely fell in love with the city, like living like a local. After a month, I was like, holy shit, this is the place. Like I'm moving here. <laughs> this is where we have to move. Like there was a strong calling again. It was like, it was like a cycle. Like, it was like a cycle repeating itself where it was like the next stage of a journey, next phase where you basically move out of your nest. And um, I was like, yeah, we have to do this. So I called my wife. We, she also came to Berlin. Uh, she stayed here for three weeks. Uh, we also went to Milan uh, to just just get an idea of how another city in, in Europe is. Uh, uh, and, you know, we went to Milan and we were absolutely definite that uh, we want to move to Berlin. And yeah, we just went back and applied for the visas, did all the paperwork and boom, we, we moved here, man, as a family. And it's just been amazing. And it's just been so, so, so... Fantastic, bro. Of course, it's not been easy. Uh, the way I'm making it sound is so rosy and dreamy. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, there's bro, always road bumps. Oh, yes. Major road bumps. Like, uh, because, you know, like back in India, I had an amazing life. Like you were born into a, a culture where everything was already set up for you. Here, I had to set up everything again. You know, like, I mean, I had no reason to move. Like I could easily be staying in India, have a comfortable life. We had people who used to come and cook for us at home. Someone used to come and clean our house because in India, you have all those luxuries. Uh, it's not so expensive in terms of uh, the people, uh, you know, paying people and stuff. So you get all this help and like the service quality in India is freaking amazing. And here it's the opposite. You have to do everything on your own. I never did my laundry. I never cooked, clean my dishes. I never used to go grocery <laughs> shopping. I was doing all the stuff which I never thought I would do, bro. And I was enjoying it so much, even though it was taking out time from my daily routine. I mean, of course, I was... Before in India, I must be creating like, say, eight hours a day. Now I create like, say, six hours a day. I mean, just giving an example. But right. I mean, I mean, I enjoyed it. I was like, this is this is amazing. Like, I, why wasn't I doing this in India? Because of course, the, the, the environment is not such, you know, you don't need to do that. You're always pampered. And I really started loving this, man. I, I started enjoying this so much. And, you know, my family came here, start, start, had to set up everything from scratch again. And I just felt that, you know, you just go out of your comfort zone. You again learn so much and you start learning, discovering aspects of you and life and others, which you probably never looked at, you know. Like, for example, uh, one of the things which really fascinates me now is perception, like human perception. Like we are always, like we are always in a habit of judging others in terms of, how we perceive our journey or how we perceive life. And we are, we are a product of our own journey, right? And for, for say, someone like a, a hardcore German who was born and raised here is, is a very sensitive, a very structured person. So when I see people, I'm like, I'm, I'm having a perception, which is, a pers which is an outsider's perception. So my perception is an Indian perception where life is not easy. Life is not so secure in India or it's not so privileged. And over here, people live a very privileged life in Europe or in the Western countries. And they probably don't realize that. But when I see that now as an outsider, I realize that so many things here are come with privilege because you're born here. You're born into the society. And there's so many things which come into India, like say culturally, food wise, family wise, everything is so strong there that you are born into that culture. Of course, there are negatives and positives everywhere, but I felt that that moving changed so much within me in terms of perception, bro. Like looking at things from a, a more holistic, a more all-round pers pers perspective than a single individualistic perspective. And for me, that's that's been super fascinating. Yeah, I think that's really good for for just humans in general. Because I, I that was another thing for me in agreeing to move here is I I constantly try to keep myself in some kind of state of of discomfort. I don't want to be too comfortable. And it can be all kinds of things. You know, I mean for a while I was I was working out every day or running every day. Um with art, I don't want to be too comfortable. So I trying to find, you know, 
how can I get in an uncomfortable area so I have to find my way out? And those are all kind of like learning lessons or way to like, you know, callous certain parts of your mind that I think are really beneficial and can yes. play into your, your art, of course. But like when you move to Paris, uh, what has been, what, what have been some of the most internal transformations you've noticed? Because I'm sure by, you know, in like two and a half years, you immediately see it. Uh, like what were some of the things which you, never thought uh, or never imagined would shift within you uh, or maybe some things you've realized which shifted within you after the moving, uh, which you feel is extremely fascinating or even not, I mean, if something worth sharing. Um, that's a really good question. I think more of, I find out, I, th I think more of others when I'm here because I'm the outcast. And I think even though a lot of people speak English here, it's very easy to get by. I try not to too much because I found at first it was very difficult for me to not, because I don't speak French, I'm learning, but I couldn't communicate. And now I'm learning to enjoy it because I find it's always a lesson. It's a lesson in humility that I can't, I mean, I remember situations, you know, being in America and running across people who can't speak English too well. And I didn't take into, I, I didn't give them a credit for asking for something so small, like where can I get a bottle of water? It's so easy for me to say in English. But now that I'm here, man, I can't even ask for like extra ketchup. You know, I don't know how. And so I really sympathize. And that's a small, funny one. But I mean, I've been in situations where, you know, it's not speaking a language. It, it could have got me in some trouble. So I'm a far more sympathetic with that. And the idea, and that's actually bled into the art for me because I just, yes, I see all these things as communication. Yeah. And everything's communication. We're com yes. communicating visually. Yes. So I think a lot more about that now. So like, um, how, how, how has this like influenced your art, like the moving and all, all these experiences you've been having the past two and a half years? Uh, how, how do you see personally, like when you see your work over the last two and a half years, do you see has it changed? Has it influenced you? Even if for the viewer it might not have, but do you see it influenced you? Uh, how, how do you see it? Like, I yeah. If, even if somebody else doesn't see it, I'm I'm more open to experimentation. Um, and I think for me, there's two reasons. One being so exposed to different art here. I get to go to a lot of museums. I, I love the Picasso museum here. You get to see that his experimentations that you don't really see in a lot of books and whatnot. Um, but Paris is such a city of layers, I feel like. And that I think is really something that's come into my work. Like I started doing more collage pieces, like I did for a show last year, these collage works on these boxes. I was using a lot of things that I found in the street, like repurposing items. And I was this, I was using my photography. I was painting, collaging things I found on the streets. And I realized that it was, I'm being affected by the certain layers, um, both literally and I think metaphorically. You know, you see like the layers of, um, you know, in the streets when you pass by on the walls, the 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 advertisements that they just layer and layer and layer on top of each other. And then they decay and they become these kind of beautiful abstract pieces in and of themselves, you know. So things like that, I think, maybe have affected it. In incredible, man. Like, and in terms of like, uh, I mean, of course, Paris is a place where there's so much beautiful architecture and, and culture. In terms of like... Uh, you know, like your approach to your work, do you think that has changed? Like, have you, have you seen that happening subconsciously? Like your work shifting a bit here and there? Because like, for me, what's, what was pretty shocking when I saw your work, when you started using Procreate was, of course, when I see you, you are a, a, a classical painter, but of course, I mean, I would never imagine you to start doing stuff digitally. Like, you know, like, Oh, I love it. Yeah. So like, when I saw you, I was like, holy shit, like, is that like, is that for real? Like, are you re actually using Procreate? And for me, first I thought maybe you didn't even like it, but I, I see you are using it again and again now. And so of course you're enjoying it. But I mean, it's for me, that is, that is truly fascinating when, you know, creative people are very open-minded and they want to explore other realms, other areas of creating. So yeah, do you see like subconsciously, uh, things in terms of your approach, your process, technically anything has shifted as well. Yeah, definitely. And I, 
it, it's kind of it's put me in a weird. I'm kind of in a, a tight spot right now artistically, because it's really opened up. Like I said, this idea to experiment with things. Problem being is working with galleries. I can't maneuver too far out of that. So I have tons of things that I've done that I have not posted. I have not put out there anywhere because I can't, I have to maintain, you know, you have to maintain your certain, whatever it is you do that people know you for. And that I find really frustrating, especially now going experimenting digitally. And it's not just procreate. Like I've been playing around with um cause I, I have a background in music and I, I stopped playing music for a long time because I just can't have, I pl- I'm a bass player and I just can't take my guitar with me ever and this and that. And now I've been creating like digital music a lot. Like I spend so much time on my iPad. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but you know, that brings up something I wanted to ask you because, okay, so I had this interesting encounter. Um, well, okay, wait, this is going to be a semi-long story. First, I'll go back to when, when I was teaching. And so that was maybe 10 years ago or something like that. And in our departments, in illustration, they had completely switched to digital. And in fine art was the only way you can take traditional painting classes. So a lot of illustrators uh, were frustrated because they didn't want to be solely digital or they felt that they couldn't work in digital because they felt like you're just mimicking, trying to mimic traditional work. So they needed to work traditionally, which is a fair point. Um, And then when, so now, the, when I got into Procreate, of course, the obvious thing I did was try to mimic my style on traditional work. Man, like, if I, if you don't, in your description, I was going to say, that, if you're in your description, uh-huh. if you don't write Procreate, maybe you can try this as an experiment. Uh-huh. I'm sure no one would recognize it's it's done on Procreate because when I see your digital works on Procreate, I'm like, how, it doesn't look like tra- digital, bro. It looks traditional. Like, oh, thanks. I, but I, I don't think that's a good thing, though. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I don't know, like, it's so it's so amazing that, I mean, of course, it looks a little bit more refined, but yeah. to like, the first glance, it, it takes a long time to really see that it's digital. Like, I don't think it even takes a long time in the sense that it, because it's so textured and layered, uh, that's, I think that's where it happens. It throws you off. Yeah. And what, and what, so the point I'm getting at, what do you think about this? Because this brought up an interesting thing to me. So the more that I started working digitally, I'm, and I do this with, because I, you know, even when I was playing music, I'm, you know, it's traditional instruments. I hated electronic, mostly electronic music. And now I'm starting to see digital as its own playing field. I don't even compare it to traditional stuff. But I, I, and I hate bringing up the social media thing, but somebody, um, commented on something a, a work that i posted and basically was criticizing saying um i don't see the point in trying to mimic these traditional things digitally just do the real thing if you can do it and it was interesting to me because i'm like i don't see it like that like i with digital every mark even if it's trying to do a brush stroke i just see it as a digital mark i don't see it as a memetics anymore so my question is you know how do you feel about that when and it's interesting because you don't have you do some traditional work but you don't have a traditional background so it do you see it as comparative at all or is it it's entirely its own thing yeah i think bro like it's it's like it's like uh when you see someone performing like in the sense say when you look at acting right like a performance actor a performance actor can go and play a character in a and say a story in a movie, in a featured film, in a blockbuster Warner Brothers or Marvel story, or if he can go and say the same another story and perform and express themselves uh, in an independent film. They can also go and perform in a series of shows on Netflix. They can also go and perform uh, in theater. You know, uh, right? So at the end of the day, what are they doing? They're basically playing a character. They're expressing that character and they're telling a story or they're part of that narrative of a story. And I feel that when you look at that medium, again, it comes, It this is something which is connected to our human behavior of taking language and interpreting it according to however it fits well. And if you, if you look at like performance uh, artists like that, like actors or whatever, we never judge them according to the medium they're using. Uh, we never discriminate that way. 
but when it comes to like say visual art or even music uh, i feel i see that a lot of people of course are very sensitive to that like they they some are very purists they see that classical form of creating is like the highest form of painting or creating and that everything else is just like mimicry or or uh, uh, an inferior form or some of them have just like it by choice but he this is how i see it i just see as a pure form of expression and i feel that in this infinite universe when there are so many infinite forms and there's so many ways uh, the nature creates different forms creatures plants trees colors uh, environments why can't we have infinite forms of creativity as well just because we are born in a in an era where technology is at its forefront we are using technology as a as a tool right if we were not using we would have been using it if we were say born 30000 years ago we would be painting in the caves or maybe on the sand or i don't know whatever our expression would be even at that time people were painting on leaves people were painting on pottery people were painting on caves people were painting on paper whatever they on trees as well rocks uh they were all mediums and they were using different uh you know ways of expressing themselves i feel that ultimately all of us are trying to tell a story whether it's an external story or whether it's an internal story it's it's a it's a it's it's a story of life itself and i feel that we should just purely look at it in uh in, in in that you know it's is the universe expressing itself in the most authentic beautiful way and i feel that like i mean something which you just said right now about um like uh uh you know like people uh categorizing stuff into like different mediums i feel that you know the the first reaction for a lot of people is that even without analyzing what the medium is they would clearly jump into it like for example when for me personally i when i started painting traditionally i found digital painting to be more difficult because the reason digital painting i find to be difficult is because it's not intuitive it's not natural because when you take your hand and you have it on a paper uh, or sorry you have it on the pen or the pencil or a, or a paint brush and you interact with the surface you can clearly see you interacting with a physical tool on a physical surface but what happens with digital digital for me personally is that it's a, a virtual surface it's not even mimicking gravity physics nothing is real you know like it's it's very hypothetical in its creative form so when you are painting digitally it's not even mimicking the way our brains are supposed to interact with touch with sensory senses of the brush and the pen and the and the paper it's interacting in a very virtual supposedly hypothetical environment and for me like digital has been a, a more unnatural difficult process of of learning to create than a traditional way because the traditional even though of course i mean it's it's just very two different things i feel traditional methods of painting are more natural like it's very intuitive if mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be say if i'm if i'm not a portrait painter if i'm just an abstract painter try and paint an abstract painting on digital it just doesn't happen and it's it's so off than a traditional painting because it doesn't come naturally you know you are not directly interacting with the surface you are the the tool is trying to mimic uh a surface but when you try and create it It, you have to obey the laws of physics of the digital environment the laws of physics of the traditional environment is completely different from the digital one so i feel that they are so different from each other that without trying out one should not comment on it or or judge uh, the tools they're very different and i feel that even if you don't get there like this we we want a bit deeper into how these two different mediums interact i feel that art in general is so infinite and it's so beyond exploring like we haven't even scratched the surface of what we can create what we can do i think there's so many different mediums and we can do so many things and we should go and try everything man and it's there's no like boundaries limit rules regulations to anything we should it's it's just fun play learning inspiring each other and you know trying to understand who we are through our work and through these different mediums i feel that it's uh, 
yeah I, i just i just find all mediums to be equally amazing and an incredible man it's it's just amazing that's perfect and yeah. i think that's actually a perfect way to end it too yes um and i would because there's so much more i want to talk to you about um we barely even scratched the surface with your work so i would i would one like to have you on again Yes. You're okay with that? Of course, and always. Two, maybe we can do it in person if I get to Berlin. Yes. So I think <laughs> that, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. Like we should definitely be in touch more often, like speak more. Second, like when you meet, come here or I come there, of course we'll hang out and I think a conversation for the next episode can bounce off from our deeper interactions of with each other, man. That'll <laughs> be really cool. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, great, man. Well, thanks for taking the time out and uh Yeah, for sharing all that with me, man. Thank you thank, very much. Th- thank you so much, bro. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Lo-Fi Sight and Sound podcast is a conversation with an American living in Paris and contemporary European artists, musicians, and filmmakers. You can find us on all streaming platforms. Please rate and review on Apple Podcasts. Follow on Spotify. Follow on Facebook. Follow on Instagram. Follow everywhere. We're everywhere. Spread the word. Thanks. Thanks.